could turn in a little bit more detail to some of the, uh, I guess, the implementation of the technology that you're using. So you're using messenger RNA. So how do you get the RNA into the cells? I mean, yeah, how do you deploy the RNA? Well, the, the, the RNAs can be deployed in many different ways. So physically, what you need to do is just to cross the, the cell membrane. So the barrier that actually uh, kind of uh, prevents anything from entering into, into the cells. So how do you do that? Well, you can do this in multiple ways. You can do this by electroporation. What does that mean? You basically uh, zap the cells with an electrical field. So you make tiny little holes uh, in the cell membrane. And so the RNA can really penetrate through these holes, through these pores that, that then are, are sealed. So that's one way. Uh, other ways, uh, uh, in turn, of course, is, is working actively in this, in this domain as well, is by uh, using some, uh, some uh, uh, methods to actually penetrate the, the without, without electroporation, but to penetrate the cell membrane so that the cargo, which is you know, inside the, some liquid nanoparticles, can physically be delivered inside the cells. So Turn is actually working on this in this domain, as I said, because the this this second type of uh, of uh, trans it's called transfection. This second second type of transfection is actually much more uh, gentle to the to the cells, so it doesn't damage the the, the cells. Uh, it's less cytotoxic, and so we are we are exploring a, a effective way to to deliver the cells to deliver sorry the mRNAs into uh, into the into the cells in a in a in a cell specific fashion. <clears throat> right, and that's what I was kind of well. That was my next question. So, how cell specific is it? So, both in in terms of the time, but also the I guess the the cocktail of um, RNAs that you use to express. Yeah. So, well, wh when it comes to electroporation, uh, uh, there is no cell specificity in the sense that electroporation, of course, is done outside of the body. And so mm -hmm. the only way to be cell specific is uh, to really work with a very defined, homogeneous population of, of cells, um, which can be done, of course. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, one, of, one of the goals that TURN has is really to be cell specific in the body without, mm -hmm. without uh, recurring, you know, through, re without recurring to the isolation of the cells from the body. So how do you do that? Well, there is many different ways to do that. And that's what, what TURN is working on. Uh, so for example, you, you, you can work on uh, the lipid structure <clears throat> of the liquid nanoparticles. So these vesicles that encapsulate the mRNA that you want to deliver into the cells. By changing the lipid structure of the liquid nanoparticles, you can achieve a cell specificity because the, the different cell membranes of different cell types have a different composition in lipids. So by just tweaking a little bit, you know, that, that lipid composition, you can uh, make the transfection of certain cell types more efficient uh, than in, in other cell types. So that's one way. <clears throat> the other way is by... Um, uh, adding to the liquid nanoparticles some moieties or or some uh, some uh, um, extra uh, peptides, for example, or antibodies or, or or small molecules that have a specific affinity for certain cell types and not for other ones. This way, you can actually target the transfection, which again is the, the active delivery of these mRNAs into the cells towards certain cell types and not to, towards other cell types. This is what, you know, it, it's an exciting field uh, and there is, there is many companies that are working on this, in particular after what, what happened with the, with the COVID-19 uh, uh, vaccines uh, to really develop these solutions for, for achieving a, a cell specificity of, of targeting. This video is brought to you by Bioptimizers. Magnesium is a crucial mineral for hundreds of reactions in the body and impacts everything, including sleep and muscle and bone health. It is difficult to get sufficient magnesium through our food. In our efforts to remain fit and healthy, my wife and I frequently exercise, after which it's important to recover well and get restful sleep. To help us with this, we chose Magnesium Breakthrough from Bioptimizer because it blends all seven essential forms of magnesium into one effective supplement while also using all natural ingredients and being gluten, soy and lactose free. It has improved our recovery and sleep quality since we've been taking it. 
And we are happy to tell you that by optimizers are offering a 10% discount for Magnesium Breakthrough to Modern Healthspan audience. Just go to www.magnesiumbreakthrough.com slash modern or click on the link in the description to get a 10% discount with coupon code MODERN10. Thank you for your support. So how has the messenger RNA industry changed with COVID? Because COVID has really uh, driven the ex explosion of messenger RNA, I guess, development. And so is that affecting what you're looking at? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, it changed really the, the world in, in, uh, at, at least in a couple of ways. So first of all, well, we, we need to be clear about one thing. I mean, it looks, it seems like all of a sudden, you know, the mRNA vaccines, you know, kind of bloomed from, from, from nothing. And that's not true. Actually, <laughs> people have been working on it for a very long time. Uh, and uh, it was just a matter of, you know, the, the timing, I guess, I, I guess, you know, COVID really um, represented uh, uh, a critical time point, uh, uh, an emergency <clears throat> that, it, that, the, that allowed the development in a very short time uh, or, or the implementation, I should say, of a, in a very short time of a research that actually had been ongoing for a very long time. Uh, but the problem is that before COVID, the, there was really no, there was a lot of skepticism about the use of, of mRNAs, for example, for, for, for vaccines or, or for gene therapy. There were a couple of examples of companies that were working, Moderna being one of them, that were working in the context of, of uh, mRNAs and gene therapy, but there was a lot of skepticism. So COVID was in a way kind of a, a, a booster or, or, you know, it really accelerated the research uh, because of the, of the emergency, of course, with that, we were, that we were facing. So this led all of a sudden to the really the awareness that indeed mRNAs are, you know, extremely powerful tools to, uh, to, 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 to really express exogenous genes into the cells and really to accelerate a number of, of research programs and clinical programs that uh, uh, otherwise would be, would be very, very slow. Uh, so that, that's one thing. The second thing that I think really happened, thanks to, to what I just said, was really to, really, a, a lot of know-how was, was developed in a very short period of time. A lot of know-how, for example, about uh, how the mRNAs, how the structure, how the sequence uh, uh, should should look like, the purity, the level of purity of the mRNAs, and so on. But also a lot of know-how about how to deliver these mRNAs into the cells. Um, so this is this has really been an accelerator, in my in my opinion, and there has been a lot of interest, you know, from from many different companies to really develop and and further develop uh, both of these technologies. <clears throat> do you think it's changed the regulatory landscape at all? Do you think it will make it easier to move through the FDA? In, in certain ways, I think so, yes. At least when it comes to, for example, the, 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 again, the features of the mRNAs, uh, the quality of the mRNA, the level of, of purity or impurity that the, the mRNA should, should have. Uh, because it really doesn't change... Uh, I'm oversimplifying it, but it, it really doesn't change what type of mRNA you are delivering into the cells, of course, uh, as, uh, because it's, it's the same from a, chemical, from, a chemical, from a chemical standpoint, sorry, um, expressing the, the, the one type of protein or another type of protein is not, is not really different you know, from, from the mRNA perspective. So uh, in, in this sense, I think, and, and the same is true, for example, for the liquid nanoparticles. There is already a lot of knowledge and there is already a lot of um, understanding about how they work. Uh, and uh, so I think that the regulatory pathway going forward is, is going to be much simpler for, for the new companies that are gonna develop mRNA-based solutions for gene therapy uh, and so on. Um, then of course, every, every single therapy is gonna be in a way unique in the sense of what that specific protein is gonna do into the, in the cells. And of course, that kind of bleeds a little bit more into the safety aspects of the uh, of the study.